This is a WWN Publishing Group recording. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved. Wild Pumpkin, a short story by Martha Sweeney from the Love Happens Anthology. Read to you by the author. Chapter 2. Delilah. Over the next few weeks, I'm in a funk. I've got to take two buses to get to work, which includes walking several blocks, figure out how I'm going to pay for the damage to my Jeep, pay for my auto insurance that has now doubled, and still pay the rest of my bills all while trying to eat. My brain is running through all of the possibilities as I get my next client situated on the massage table. I love your tats, she says, laying down. Thanks, I reply as I start lighting the candles. I'm surprised they let you have them here, she comments. Tess is cool, plus they're mostly covered, I return. True, she says with a smile. I don't mind. I know that many businesses don't let people have them show at all. Yours, it's like they add to your beauty. Thanks, I reply, honestly appreciative of the compliment. You're welcome, she returns. My client, who is old enough to be my mom, lays back and lets me get to work. She offers a nice sized tip bigger than I had anticipated. I end up working a full day thanks to several walking clients. Weekdays are hit or miss with enough cash flow. My last appointment is chatty the entire time and much younger than the women I've had all day. I make it to the bus stop about a minute before it pulls up. Taking a seat, I take out my cell phone to text Jolene. I write, on my way home, it takes Jolene a few seconds to reply. I just got in. Want me to cook? I text back, please, I have at least 45 minutes until I'm back. Jolene responds, cool, you owe me. I write back, I have since I lost the car. Jolene texts, what do you want? I reply, anything, queen chef. Jolene replies, buttering me up, huh? Hoping to get laid? I text back, LOL always, but not by you. Jolene responds, I'll get you drunk enough to where you're curious. I respond, hasn't happened yet. Jolene texts, doesn't mean it won't. I reply, met your future wife today. Jolene writes back, really? I text, yep. She's as plain as they come. She's perfect for you. Jolene texts, plain? I write back, I bet she wears granny panties too. Jolene responds, that's harsh. I respond, I thought you were into that type. Jolene texts, it only happened that one time. I reply, that's all it takes, lol. Jolene writes back, careful bitch, I'm in charge of food. I text, haha, okay, sorry, I loves you. Jolene responds, you have to do better than that. I look up from my phone to make sure I'm not laughing out loud or have a bunch of people staring at me. My eyes catch a glimpse of two hotties walking on the sidewalk into a high-end restaurant. I text Jolene, do you need me to pick up anything on my way back? Jolene replies, nope. My phone starts buzzing and I huff when I see who's calling. I text Jolene, that stupid public pretender is calling. Jolene responds, talk about creeper. I reply, let me see what he wants. Jolene texts, see you in a few. I reply, loves ya. Jolene replies, loves ya too, bitch. Hi, Mr. Barron, I greet with a sigh. Where were you today? He asks curtly as if he's an annoyed parent. At work, I inform. Why weren't you at your community service? He inspects with irritation in his tone. I need the extra hours, I explain sarcastically. I've got to pay my bills, even the bills for a car. I can't use. Do you know what happens if you fail to attend your court-appointed community service, let alone fulfill them by the time you're supposed to? He inquires. I have off in two days, I state. I'll go then. You can't just go when you feel like it, Mr. Barron insists. Well, I need to go when I'm not working, I comment, trying to stay calm. You better be there tomorrow, Mr. Barron directs. If you're not, you could have a warrant issued for your arrest. What? Why? I snap. There are time constraints on when you need to get your services done, he shares. Plus, since you never picked what kind of a community service you wanted to do, I had to choose for you. You never told me any of this, I challenge. I told you this plenty of times, Miss Powell, Mr. Barron claims. Do you want to go to jail? Are you threatening me? I press heatedly. No, (laughs) he laughs. But the court will put you in jail for failure to comply with your court order community service. How the hell am I supposed to make a living if I've got so much community service to do? I push back. That's something you should have thought about before driving under the influence and swerving, he claims. I wasn't intoxicated, I bark. 
I look up to see if anyone has heard me. A small sigh slips past my lips when I notice that the bus is practically empty. The only facts that matter right now is you attending your community service and fulfilling those hours by the time they're supposed to be completed, or else there are repercussions, he lectures. Fine, I huff. I'll be there. This is the end of this chapter. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the story so far. To find out about new releases before the general public, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter. You'll find a link below in the description. Also, to be notified when the next chapter is published, make sure you subscribe to my channel.